welcome back to part two of Art with Chinuva, or as you as you want to call it, um, Fine Art with Chinuva. Anyway, we're back, and it's about 24 hours later, and today on the show, we're going to take a look at some more little things that deal with art, as well as trying to finish up our painting. So, I hope you enjoy this wonderful segment, this hopefully conclusion of Art with Geneva, in this particular episode anyway. So, let's roll credits! <laughs> We're going to start out the show today looking at our painting and what we did yesterday. Hmm. Looks very good, doesn't it? Yeah. And as you can see, it's a little drier because I can touch it now and not really get any on my fingers. However, let me tell you that blues and greens tend to dry a little slower. They're, a little, they're still a little wet, but that's okay. Um, we'll continue working. Um, because it's dry, I think, enough to be able to, you know, work. Added clouds, we made horizon, we put in the grass, made some hills, made it all happy. Gave it life, if you will. You know, we added some trees to it, you know, just to... We added some trees to it just to break up that fact that it's a vast open land filled with nothing. <laughs> Much like my mind, but actually my mind's actually full of crap, because that's why I have to keep going back to the doctors. But, you know, that's a different story. Which one should I use? Now, I'm going to teach you how to sort of create people. Because like I said yesterday, I think it'd be fun to add my friends and I into the painting. So that, that might be a little fun, you know, just, just to create a little bit of touch, you know? Okay? So, what we want to do first in creating skin tone, we want to use burnt sienna, which is sort of a light brown, sort of almost a reddish brown. Then, we want to get some more white. And I can't stress enough that you use a lot of white when creating painting. Then, you want to get some burnt Raw umber, not burnt. <laughs> I'm thinking of my dinner again. So you got your raw sienna, your brown burnt umber, raw umber, whatever. You got your white, and you got your burnt sienna. If you wanna take some of this burnt sienna, light brown, mix it just a little bit of it get some white in there. Eating this color here. You take a little of this, a little of this, and you mix it up to create sort of a, a peach color. And then you just get a little bit of this dark brown and mix it in there, just a little bit of it. And there you have it. That's a pretty good skin color, and you can add more white to it. We have a person here. What we're doing first is... What we're doing first... My people at home, my friends at home, we are going to paint face. We're going to paint the face. So we get that color that we just made. 
we started out here. While I'm painting this, I might want to zoom in a little more, just so you can get the fine detail of exactly what it is that I'm doing here. Okay. So, to create the face, you want to take a little bit of lighter color here. And you want to get a little bit of darker color. Just a little bit, not very much. And you want to put in a little, like this, like its eyes. See that? Maybe make that a little darker. That's a little too dark. That's okay. Because like I told you yesterday, you got to blend your lights and your darks. I kind of need to do that in a way. And I know, I know people, I know, it kind of sucks, but nobody said I was a great artist. Yeah, I did, I said that. Because <laughs> I am. I'm a pretty good artist, I think. Right now, I'm just teaching you all at home how to make, you know, sort of relatively simple designs that make in a face. Now, all you all know that Bertha's hair changes from red to blonde to all kinds of stuff. But that's okay. What we're going to get now is just to get a little bit of that red color. So what we're going to do now is we're going to mix together the red and this reddish brown. Zoom in on that, see how it looks. As you know, Bertha, this is dedicated to you. Because without you, this, yeah, I wouldn't be able to do this painting. You know, well, I would. No, I wouldn't, because I wouldn't know you. I wouldn't put you in it then, I guess, would I? That's really nice. Let me just tell you a little bit about this painting. It's a little boy, and his name is Prince Philip. And he must be like a prince or something, or he must be royalty. Because look at the bells and... and and beautiful things all over his little dress. <laughs> Why is he wearing a dress? I don't know. So that is a great painting. Um, if you look at the detail, what I really like about this picture, and I think what makes it really famous, has nothing to do with the stupid prints. Because when royalty would have their pictures done, they, they didn't have cameras back then, as you know. They couldn't just go like Kmart or Walmart and get, you know, their pictures developed. They had to have somebody like me, somebody famous and artistic, to paint them in dresses and stuff. I don't know why they wanted him in a dress. But if you look at it, over here, this is cute little doggy. Isn't that cute doggy? And that is what I think really makes this picture famous. That dog's name is... I don't know what that dog's name is, but I'm going to call him Betty. I'm going to call Prince Philip Betty, too. Because he just looks like Betty. You know who he looks like? Just look at that face. <laughs> kind of looks like Johnny in a dress. Well, we might get back to some more interesting paintings. Um... <laughs> in a little while. But while we do that, well, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to get back to the painting. <laughs>